Hey everyone. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what I look for when I'm searching for rocks and looking at rocks to use for root over rock bonsai. All right, so I've got five rocks here on the table and I'm gonna go through each one of these and just kind of talk about what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Uh, so first up, let's start with this, which is a type of lava. You can see that it's relatively porous. There are, is, you know, it's a dark color and it's got some nice shape to it. I generally don't like lava rock, but uh, this piece is actually kind of interesting. And so I, I might consider using this. One thing to keep in mind with lava rock though is that frequently it can easily break. And sometimes, especially with uh, black pines, you can end up having the, the tree crush the rock. So a big chunk of the rock might break off as a result of the pressure from the roots uh, once the tree's actually established and starting to create some wood. Uh, so, the second one I have here is uh, what's called Napa Fieldstone. And we can get this here in Northern California for dirt cheap. Uh, literally, you can get it at most stone yards and people use it for stacked rock walls and whatnot. Now, it's not really my favorite because it's hard to find interesting shapes. This is actually, this particular piece is a little bit more interesting than a lot of the ones you see. They're more sort of like round boulders. So I can imagine using this for a bonsai, but it's not my favorite because there's not a whole lot of interest in the color. This side is very flat, uh, as you can see, and, and the, the shapes on this side are not very interesting. So it's, it's certainly something that you could use, and if I was going to use it, I would, I would want to carefully sort of consider how I was putting the tree on it. All right, so now... These other three, I've got two that came out of, uh, out of creek locations and one that came out of just like a rock slide on the side of a mountain. Uh, so let's start with the, the creek stones. Now in Suiseki, the, the rounded nature of a stone is, is part of the aesthetic. You, Suiseki just means water stone in Japanese. And so these guys are from a part of the creek where they're, they're not too rounded, uh, not like a gravel or something like that. And I've picked them based on the, you know, the coloration, the minerals, and the sort of overall shape. So this one's kind of cool. Uh, maybe you could orient it like this, or you could orient it like this. You have to kind of think about the orientation that you're going to use the, uh, use the stone uh, so that you can think about what it's going to look like in the final composition. So nice, dense mineral. Uh, it would be very difficult for me to break this stone, and that makes it a, a good candidate for using for a root over rock bonsai. All right, this guy is also from a creek, and you can see it has more of these like pockets and stuff, and this, is, this kind of interest is stuff that I really find uh, useful in creating root over rock bonsai and even like rock plantings and whatnot. So we can think about the orientation. There's a flat side here on the bottom. We could orient it like this, or we could kind of turn it up and make it oriented like that so that you can see these, uh, these openings on the sides. Um, kind of want to go through and, and, and think about what this is going to look like sort of as um, part, of your, part of your composition, part of the trunk of your tree in the finished composition. One thing I'll say is that uh, I don't really like the light colored minerals that are mixed in here. So if I was gonna use this stone, I would probably try to minimize the appearance of those, uh, either by putting the, the patches that are white on the bottom or you know away from the main uh, intended front. All right, and the last stone I have here is uh, just from a uh, rock slide. And basically you can see how angular it is. You can see there are sort of some faceting here and it's also got some lichen on it. It was uh, just in a big pile of rocks. 
This is the kind of thing that I prefer. Now, this is a very dark mineral um, and it's dry right now, so it'll be even darker when it's wet or if it uh, started to develop a patina after many years. Um, but it's not just black or dark brown. It also has some sort of uh, little patches of, of other colors in it. And I think more importantly than that, though, is the, is the sort of interest that these facets create. And it just creates all kinds of possibilities that you can use uh, with, your, with your tree. Um, this is one of my favorite ones that I collected on a trip up to Black Butte Reservoir uh, near Orland, California. Um, so if you guys are in California and wanna, wanna go up there, you could, uh, you could check it out. Again, um, when you're looking for, for stones for bonsai, think outside the box a little bit. You can pick up stones from inside of a creek or you can pick up stones from rock slides on a hike or something like that. And uh, look at the shapes, look at the color of the stone, make sure that it's a hard stone, not something that's just gonna fall apart like a shale or something like that. And uh, good luck with making your root over rock compositions. Thanks guys.